In a previous lesson, we explored some simple chord voicings for the tune Pure Imagination. In this lesson, we will build upon these foundations with some advanced reharmonization techniques and principles. So let's get warmed up with some extended chord voicings and then as we progress towards the second A section we will add some passing chords, upper structure triads and tritone substitutes. So starting at the top of the form we have an F minor 7 and the first thing I notice is that we have the 11th in the melody. And so that means that this Kenny Barron voicing will work nicely. So this is one of my favourite voicings to play over minor chords. We have stacks fifths from the root, a half step interval, stacks fifths again, and that gives us a F minor 11. Now if your hands are small, you can also play this. So here I'm just playing root, flat three, five, flat seven, nine, 11. So this and this contains the exact same notes, but this voicing is just arranged into a smaller area of the piano. And so if you have smaller hands, you should be familiar with rearranging notes into a smaller space. Another thing I like to do here is double the 11th. So see, I'm playing both the flat three and the 11th with my thumb, and I'm also doubling the nine. And if you listen to the difference, that's without the doubled notes, and with the doubled notes, it just gives us a much richer sound, which is nice. So moving on, F minor 11 to a B flat 9 sus. We could add the 13 here if we wanted. Personally, my preference is to just play the B flat 9 sus. And then moving on, we have an E flat major 7. And this is a great voicing when we have the major 7 in the melody over a major chord. So I'm playing a so what chord built from the major third. So what's nice about this voicing is we have this stack of fourths. So fourth interval, fourth interval, fourth interval. And for me, this very much suits the theme of the song. So it gives us a very light, uplifting and airy vibe. So that's the first three chords. Let's play them and then carry on. Okay, so that's the first A section. Let's rewind a little bit and let's talk about the end of the first line. So we have the 251 in E flat major. And then we have this upward bass line movement. So E flat, if we look at what the bass is doing, E flat, F, F sharp, and then E flat over G. So we want to bring that out in our voicings. This is quite a rare instance where I would just play the, the, the root position seventh chord stacked like this. There is other ways we can do it, but in this tutorial, it works nicely to play F minor seven. We just bring the, the bottom two notes up and that will take us to F sharp diminished seven. And we could look at this as a D seven with a flat nine, and that will want to go to, to G. And so we have this F sharp diminished, and then an E flat over G. So here's E flat over G, we just play this inversion. So from the top, so notice there I did a little turn on the melody which could be nice to add a bit more interest. And so here 
we have a C minor, and notice that the melody is playing the root and then the flat three, and so we can play a block chord. So here I've just taken the C minor seven shape, doubled the top and bottom note, and then inverted it. And in my left hand, I flick into it, and this just adds more character. So that's what we're playing. Then we go to an F minor, and we have the nine in the melody. So this is a rootless voicing, which it still sounds like F minor, but to really instill that F minor sound, we can go down and hit the root down here, and that creates a nice floor. So from the C minor, and then again, I'm here I'm just thinking F minor, but it's like the first inversion, and again I'm flicking up with my left hand. Again to that B flat 9 sus, but this time we have used the 13, so we could look at this as a C minor triad over B flat, B flat 7 in our left. The melody is the 13, which is why this voicing works well. And one thing you'll notice I do, I take that suspension up a half step and that becomes the sharp 11. So now we're playing effectively a B flat 13 sharp 11, so a major triad off the 9. But I did omit the 3 in my, in my left hand. And so. Just that little voice going upwards, for me, it adds some nice character. If you want, you could even move that down to the flat 9, so. That adds a little more colour too. Let's just see how that sounds. And so this is a 2-5-1. If we look at the harmony, we have an F minor 11 to a B flat sus, which is effectively B flat 7, down to the 1 chord. But instead of going straight to the 1, we hit the 1 diminished. So here's the 1 diminished, E flat diminished 7. In my left hand, I'm playing the root and the double flatted 7. In my right hand, I'm playing flat 3, flat 5, and the melody. And then I resolve to E flat major. So we can look at that diminished chord as like a temporary stepping stone, and it delays the resolution. So let's go from the top and then move into the second A section. So that's our second A section. Now we've really started mixing stuff up here. In particular, I've added lots of passing chords. So let's discuss exactly what I'm doing here. We have the melody, which is... And this takes us to F minor 7. So the two melody notes before it are C, E flat, and then we go to the B flat. And so I'm thinking of that point, the F minor, as my target, and so I want to try and create two chords that will fit with that melody and that will lead us nicely to this F minor 7. Now what I played was a G7 sus, so G7, or G9 sus, so this could be seen as a G7, and then I went to an F sharp 13 sharp 11 or a G flat 13 sharp 11, however you want to look at it. So we have... And so that G flat 13 sharp 11 is a half step above F minor. We could also do G sus to C7 sharp 9, and then to F minor. So remember that this C7 sharp 9 and G flat 7 or G flat 13 now, or a tritone apart. And so 
if we if we play that A flat triad over C7, we then get a C7 sharp five sharp nine. But over F sharp seven or G flat seven, we get a, a more of a floating quality because this is the sharp eleven. This is G flat thirteen sharp eleven. If upper structure triads are new to you, click the icon in the top right hand corner for a beginner level tutorial on this topic. So. And then I go up and just play the melody in an octave. I know the top is off the screen here, but I'm just playing this B flat and doubling it. Another thing we could do there is instead of playing here, we could play it here. Maybe instead of G9 sus, we could play G minor 11, which again has the melody note that we want, to T7 sharp five sharp nine, and then to F minor seven. But for me, the melody is going quite high, so I wanted to keep it down here. Perhaps we could play... So this is a minor 11 flat 5, G minor 11 flat 5. Down here it sounds a little bit muddy, but here it would sound better. And then to the C7, and then to F minor. So they are options as well. We could play a bigger voicing like that if your hand would stretch, and then maybe even... So these are some different options you have. For me personally, I like this. This sus chord to the G flat 13 sharp 11, and then to F minor. And moving on, I've done the same thing again. So there we're going to B flat. And so this time I'm thinking, well, the melody note again is C and E flat. And what chords can I put under that melody that will lead us to the B flat? So I'm thinking, well, for a B flat, we could play a 2 5 1, C minor, F7, B flat. But instead of playing a minor chord, there's a C13 sus, and then to an F7 with a sharp 11 and a flat 9. And that keeps gives us that flat 7 on top. And so what it's doing is creating creating fifths. It's creating a effectively a 2-5-1, but we've reharmonized it with sus voicings, an altered dominant chords, and then And also notice when I get to the B flat sus, this time I do resolve. So I play B flat 9 sus. And then I go to this B flat 7 or B flat 9 with a sharp 5. And that adds some nice color. Adding these kind of passing chords, it does require a knowledge of jazz harmony. So if this doesn't make sense right now, firstly, check out the lessons referenced below on passing chords and sus chords. And the more that you play these and the more that you apply it to your playing, the more comfortable and more familiar it will become. So let's start again from the second A section. another row of passing chords. We played... This time I, instead of playing this voicing for the E flat major 7, E flat major 7, I played this voicing. But then I played the same ascending phrase. And here instead of playing E flat over G, I'm playing G minor, adding some melody, going to a C7, and then back to our G flat 13 sharp 11. So this time I'm doubling that triad just to create a big sound. And then here you can see I'm playing the triad shape in my left, but like this. If that's too much for you, you can just play the root and fifth. So here I'm doubling the melody and I'm also playing some of the chord tones in between. So it's an F minor 7. I'm playing 9, 5, flat 7 and 9. And that works fine over the B flat sus as well, which is nice. 
And here we go to a G major. Then we can play the nine or the three. So just before we explore the fill that takes us into the bridge, let's just rewind and let's look at that cadence which takes us into the F minor. So we have G minor. So this is effectively a 2-5-1, but we're using the tritone substitute as a passing chord. So G minor 7 for the 5, C7. And then instead of just going to the F minor, we go half step up from F minor and then drop into it. So the movement is... That might be quite challenging to start with, so remember to play it slowly. And one thing you'll notice is that we're starting to build some energy. So with the first A section, we were playing it mostly with within this octave or for the melody, and then now... we started doubling it to create a bigger effect. So let's play from the top and then we'll move into the bridge. So as a beginner, how do you go about learning all of these techniques and principles for reharmonization? Well, click the link on the screen and this will take you to a step-by-step -step YouTube playlist on all of the harmonic devices that we have covered in this lesson. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I will see you next time.